Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this webinar, this AppGeo webinar. It is now 2 p.m. Eastern time on the dot. Uh, this is Jordan Frazik. And again, this is the getting the most out of Google Maps platform webinar. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to wait about 60 seconds. The room is filling up quickly. And as soon as uh, it's about 201 or 202, we'll get the show on the road. So again, thank you very much uh, from everybody here at AppGeo uh, for joining us for the AppGeo webinar, getting the most out of Google Maps platform. Nice. All right. Well, it is now almost 2.02. It's 2.01 Eastern time here. And uh, from AppGeo, we would like to welcome you once again uh, to this webinar. We have a lot of material to cover today. We have a lot of folks coming from a variety of different industries. So we're really excited to show off all the different capabilities of Google Maps platform. Um, so if you want to just hit that next slide, we'll jump right into this webinar, actually. And so just to let everybody know the agenda today real quick, um, once again, this is Applied Geographics or AppGeo. Um, we're one of Google Maps' top partners, so we are a premier partner of Google Maps. We also have a location-based services badge, so um, we not only just sell Google Maps products, APIs, we also build apps. Um, we do a lot with them, uh, the APIs that is. So we're gonna get into that first. We're gonna jump into the overview of the APIs, understanding uh, the Maps platform. Next, we'll go into common business workflows. So unlocking the power of Maps, routes, places, and then we'll go deeper into increasing business value. Um, Google Maps is one of the best platforms to build custom apps uh, on the market. And we wanna show different examples of how you can build apps, how you can, um, do other initiatives with, with Google Maps as well. So um, how AppGeo can help, like I said, professional services, we are a location-based services partner. We can help build apps. We can help build websites that include Google Maps APIs and API usage. Um, so we're gonna show you a lot of creative examples from uh, horizontal across, the, across multiple industries. And uh, if you could just pop to that next slide, please. So as many of you may have already heard, um, there is big news, obviously. There's a new icon um, in your phone. Some people love it, some people don't, but it's the Google Maps uh, 15th birthday this year. So uh, as we celebrate Google Maps quinceanera, there are over 5 million websites and apps that use Google Maps platform every week. So if you haven't seen that blog, we will include a link to that after this webinar as well, but it is Google Maps birthday, so happy birthday, Google. And so Dave, um, Dave is here to introduce a little bit about the Maps, Routes, and Places APIs, and he, he's going to dive right into the topic. And uh, without further ado, Dave, are, are you there? I am. Thank you, Jordan. So good day, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. What we want to start with here is a, uh, a brief overview of the uh, Google Maps API. We recognize that uh, many of you are probably already working with the API or parts of the API, and we may have some folks in the audience who have not started working with it at all. So we wanted to sort of level set and uh, bring everybody up to date on what's available. The platform is divided into three groups, the maps, routes, and places. Maps are used to put information on a map into a website or, or an application uh, on the Google Cloud using the platform and can be used to add your own data, stylize the maps, and so forth. The routes is all about uh, routing logistics, so getting directions and distances either from point to point or from multiple points. And the Places API is tapping into Google's uh, extensive database of place location information. They have over 100 million uh, places, addresses, residents, businesses, landmarks, the whole works available around the world. And there's a comprehensive API for uh, accessing that information. Next slide, please. So let's begin by looking at the Maps API. So the Maps API is, built, is, is broken into four different APIs, uh, from simple to fairly, uh, fairly uh, complex. On the left-hand side, begin with the Maps static APIs. So if you need to just put a single static map into your application or your website, uh, you just through a, uh, a, a URL call with a, with a lat one, you can uh, uh, request a static map and bring that in. Then the Maps Embed API basically is replicating what you see in the consumer Google Maps. So you can add an interactive map, which has the navigation, the uh, street view, all those basic things that we see in the consumer version. But of course, if you use this as an API through an HTTP request, 
you have that in your own application or on your own website and under your control. The Street View API can give you the access to Google's extensive Street Views uh, database from around the world. <laughs> and, uh, and you can use that independent of a map if you so desire in your application. And then the Maps JavaScript API, which is what we see most of our clients working with, provides for the dynamic maps where you control the styling, you can bring in your own data on top of the map, you can uh, look at it in 3D, you can do all the kinds of things in the consumer map application, consumer Google map application, plus bring in your own data, excuse me, and stylize it the way you want it, the way you want it to look. Then we take a look at the Routes API. <clears throat> The Routes API is broken into three API groups. Sorry, we've got a, a slight delay in these slides coming up. The, uh, there we go. The, the first API in the Routes is the Directions API, and that's very similar to what you see in the consumer grade, but again, you now have the control of this to put into your own workflows. So uh, provide directions for transit, biking, driving, and so forth. If you're working with a, a logistics uh, routing or type of application and you want to find out distances or travel times from uh, covering multiple points, then the distance matrix API is used for this purpose. And then the roads API is very interesting. That's the one that is used when you bring in uh, vehicle locations. So you might have an application where you're tracking your work fleet, your uh, fleet of vehicles, or maybe uh, um, transportation systems, buses and so forth and you want to track that against a road network. So you can take those GPS data, data points coming in and use the road API and it will snap it to the Google road network and you can then see it on the map and, and uh, track the vehicles. Next slide, please. So then we have the API for places API, uh, API group. And uh, this, this gets into uh, the extensive library of place information. As I say, Google has over 100 million up-to-date information about locations around the world, and you can get to those through simple HTTP request. Uh, if you're working with multiple time zones and that's relevant, there's a time zone API. This is where we see the geocoding API, and I know many of you are probably using this as one of the more popular ones. So you can take um, uh, street addresses, it'll return X, Y, and put it on the map for you. Or the opposite, you can give it X, Y locations. Maybe you have those coming from somewhere else and you need to know the street address. So that's referred to as reverse geocoding. And then we have in the, uh, in the, in the places library, we have the autocomplete, very, very popular. We'll show an example of that in a minute, but the ability to use place information to automatically fill in uh, dialogue forms. We have a geolocation API, which is very useful if you uh, want to see where you are located, maybe coming off of your cell phone or off of your device location, and you can put that in and it'll show up on the map. And then one thing that's kind of uh, interesting about the Places API in general is, is that it's available in three flavors, the JavaScript API for web browser applications and the Android and iOS APIs for mobile applications. Next slide, please. So what I'd like to do next is go through some common business workflows using some of these basic APIs that we see a lot of our clients doing, and, and quite honest, they're doing it on their own. These are pretty straightforward. They're very popular. If you're not familiar with these, this will be very relevant. There may be some in here that you've not considered. So we want to look at the autocomplete uh, workflow, store locations, facility locator, and ATM locator. Next slide, please. We'll begin with the autocomplete uh, API, which is part of the Places API. And this is uh, often used, commonly used in checkout situations. Uh, you may not be using your application, but if you have done any online shopping, you're likely to see this in use uh, where you are in a checkout dialogue and you start to type in a, an address, your address or any address, and it automatically gives you some suggestions. You pick one of those, and it automatically uh, completes the form. This particular example is coming from a Google customer application called Shopify, and this is uh, part of their, uh, their uh, online shopping experience. 
This is very useful in guaranteeing location accuracy from the, the customer to the, uh, to the uh, organization. And very important, it can be used to not only speed up the checkout process, but to prevent uh, checkout abandon. So I don't know if you've ever run into this where you don't have this type of capability and you start to type in and then you make a mistake and you see, oh my gosh, there's so much to fill in here. And you, and you give up and you abandon the checkout line. And so there have been some studies done that the groups that use this type of, a, of a autocomplete minimize their checkout problems and, and makes the whole process a lot smoother. Next slide, please. So then we'll take a, the next one is a store location example. We definitely have a, a delay in the, in the uh, slides coming up, apologize for that. Next one is one of our customers, Bucky Stores, and they are um, they provide some uh, supersized gas stations. If you've never been to a Bucky's, it's it's quite an experience. Primarily in the southern Texas area around Houston, they now have some of these stores in Louisiana, and uh, we have a fairly new one in Alabama, the state that I live in. And they have this on their website, and you can see they're using the uh, the, map, the JavaScript Maps API. Very uh, effective presentation of where their stores are located with those symbols. And then they have a little bit of information and you can hit the view in maps and it'll take you to a, uh, the consumer Google Maps and you can get uh, directions. So very simple, very effective store locations. A lot of people are doing this, pretty easy to do. And this is all about driving uh, customer traffic. Next slide, please. Next one we're going to look at is called Facility Locator, and this is uh, one of our customers, Beacon Health. They are a uh, behavior provider, uh, search locator uh, organization, and on their website they have a, a very clever search map with filters uh, that can look based on search distance or behavior provider characteristics. So this is using the JavaScript Maps API, and you can see the, uh, the map there with all the locations. Uh, this is around uh, Charlotte, North Carolina area. And then you see across the top a set of filters, specialties, wheelchair access, accepting new patients. Those are characteristics of behavior providers. And so you hit one of those, uh, select a criteria, and the map automatically updates to show you the locations of providers that meet those criteria. Likewise, the distance search. If I took, uh, came over here and went from 50 miles to 100 miles, the map would automatically have to update. Again, very powerful use of uh, facility locator. We see this with, with uh, clients doing store locator, same type of uh, approach. This is all done with the uh, JavaScript Maps API. Next slide, please. Then when the next one is, um, uh, our, one of our clients, Citibank, and they're using uh, a, a form of a facility locator, but specifically this is an application for ATM locators, and it's a mobile application. Citi has a, a flavor of this on their website, and then they also offer this mobile app. And this is a um, very sophisticated uh, mobile application. It's using uh, all four of the APIs listed, maps, places, geocoding, and autocomplete. And uh, you can, on your mobile device, you can uh, locate from where you are, find the closest ATM, show the uh, directions on how to get there. So very, very effective. And of course, this is all about driving customer traffic. Next slide, please. So what we'd like to do next is, is go a little bit deeper and show you some examples of what we at AppGeo have built for our clients using the uh, Google Map, uh, Maps platform. And before I get into this, I would like to say, as Jordan mentioned, if you have any questions that uh, you come up with as we go through here, please use the question box over on the right-hand side in the console to uh, submit your question, and we'll be glad to answer those questions uh, at the end of the webinar. So I'd like to go a little bit deeper in uh, talking about some projects that we've done. It's all about increasing your business value, and these are kind of, these are a little bit more sophisticated applications and what you see. Don't want to take anything away from the, from the more common uses, but this is the kind of stuff that um, we can help you with. So I'd like to give you an example of fleet logistics and routing, campus public information, location analytics, facility management, 
locating facilities, risk assessment, and then a very interesting project that uh, illustrates the scalability of, of Google Cloud and Google Maps. And, and two of these, uh, you'll be seeing a live demo here in a few minutes. So we'll begin with our fleet logistics and routing example. This is a project that we built for an organization that uh, provides a bus transit in the New York City area. And the project got into um, fleet and ride management. So it's not only providing um, uh, routes and directions for the uh, bus drivers, but also managing the passenger pickup and drop off schedules on a daily basis. This is powered by the a combination of the MAPS JavaScript API and the Directions API. And of course, uh, in the world of fleet logistics, this is all about lowering the vehicle operating cost, minimizing schedule delays, and ensuring quality transportation service. Our next example is one around campus public information. This is a project that we did for the Rutgers University. Rutgers is a very large university. They have three campuses, uh, one of the larger uh, university systems in the country. And uh, we built a campus public information application for them on the Google Maps platform that is helping to st uh, students navigate the campus, provide virtual campus tours, uh, and communicate transportation options. Uh, this is a great example of uh, really exploiting the, uh, the power of the platform. We're using four different APIs in this project. And I'd like to ask my colleague, Aaron Doucette, uh, to give us a live demo of this, uh, of this project. Aaron? Hi there, Dave. So we're gonna launch right into a live demo of this um, Rutgers University map. And if you want to follow along at home, if you just go to maps.rutgers.edu after the webinar, you can play around with this yourself. Um, so the cool thing about Rutgers is they um, have campuses across the state of New Jersey with their main campus in New Brunswick. But I think this is really applicable to facilities that might be distributed across the state, um, like a hospital system, for example. And we start out with a statewide view with um, three dots representing the campuses. And as we click on one of the campuses, we're taken down to the next geographic scale um, where we can now see individual um, areas on the campus. Going one step further is where the map really comes to life. And here is where we have um, the Google Maps that you're familiar with overlaid with custom geographic data in the form of building footprints, um, various residential areas, and if we are go to um, a little closer still, we can even turn on features like parking lots and um, bike routes. And as a you know large campus with a lot of buildings, a lot of visitors, over um, 70,000 students across the entire network, um, there's quite a lot of information about each one of these buildings. So beyond just representing um, the building footprint on a map, if we were to click on one of these, um, we're able to pull up more information, bring in a custom picture of the building, and then link out to maybe an additional building management system or a web page on that particular asset. And this would have real benefit potentially for, say, a real estate firm with a portfolio of properties where you want to start with that Google interface, but have a more customized experience leading people to say a listing or various information on your own website. So another feature we've really liked working with within the Google universe is the street view functionality. And let's see here. Um, this allows people who may not be on campus to again, take a virtual campus tour um, drop right in and see exactly how to get around, you know, where they can park, what kind of features they have. And um, we're seeing this more and more, not only on roads, but photo spheres and even indoor um, 360 views that people have uploaded and shared to Google. So a really powerful tool to, you know, let people come and view your property without having to um, make the trip there ahead of time. Other features I'd like to point out include the ability to 
um, bring in transit networks, which could also have live vehicle tracking and, and stops with, say, a countdown until the next bus. That could have a real application in the event that maybe you have a shuttle service or you are a transportation company yourself. Um, very popular integration is bringing those um, transit options into the map and giving people much more um, depth as to you know those real-time activities. And Rutgers is home to one of the largest college transportation networks of any campus in the United States. So they've um, really enjoyed having that feature. And lastly, I'll note that the street map isn't the only option when you design an application like this. It's very easy to integrate a satellite view uh, or an aerial imagery. And this could even include your own um, custom collector drone imagery as an overlay. We have some great integrations with various providers, um, letting you get real high quality data and um, very up-to-date information, as you can see here. So um, we encourage you to check this out on your own and um, explore what's possible that you may have not had a chance to see with Google before. Next application we want to display is on the NYC core data application, which was developed by the Furman Center, um, which is a joint collaboration between the NYU Law School and the Graduate School for Public Policy. So this app is a little different than Rutgers in that we're looking at a lot of demographic data and different overlays, and in particular, the Furman Center is focused on the subsidized um, housing within the different boroughs of New York and understanding data trends around um, demographics, around neighborhood and market conditions relating to rental prices. And what we're going to do now is launch into another live demo where you'll be able to see that kind of come to life. So this is the coredata.nyc app, um, another one that is publicly accessible. And I think it's a great representation of how you can bring large data sets in and really shows off Google Maps capability of being able to render these large amounts of data without any slowdowns. And that's because they're able to utilize the power of Google Cloud and all of the infrastructure around Google's servers to render this information very quickly and very accurately. So all of the points that you're seeing now represent individual properties, which meet that subsidized housing um, standard. But going a step further, we're able to add um, custom boundaries at the borough scale or even um, city council or congressional districts. So you can look at trends across um, socioeconomic levels and political levels. But additionally, a whole slew of neighborhood indicators which relate to demographics, the housing market, land use. So let's take a look at, for example, households with uh, children. And if we're to zoom out here a little bit, we can get a representative view of, oops, that's too far, the entire city. And if I turn off the properties for a minute, you can get a look at um, the scale of what that data is coming in as. And of course, all of these are customizable in terms of um, the year that we're looking at, the region that's being displayed, um, summarizing that data in real time. And what's pretty fascinating about this app in particular is that the data that you're seeing for these overlays is summarized from across 20 different discrete sources between the census, the American Community Survey, um, and you know city data in addition to this property data, and um, rental market data, which relates to things like the median rent and affordability. Google Maps is a great platform for summarizing data from a variety of sources all within one application rather than requiring users to go and collect this all themselves and bring it into a legacy GIS application. So in these cases, we find it really powerful um, from a data visualization side. And that's what this app does particularly well, being able to go all the way from that borough scale, 
all the way down to the street level um, and individual property boundaries. So that flexibility and seamless transitions are one of the unique aspects to Google Maps that make it ideal for data visualization suites such as core data. And um, again, this is a great one to check out afterward and you can access it at app.coredata.nyc. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. So those are a couple of great examples of some projects that we've done that show you the, uh, the power of the platform and bringing those into some uh, very interesting applications that uh, can take you deeper in business value. Moving on, let's look at a few more examples of uh, what we were able to do as a uh, uh, providing a development application. In the world of facility management, we've, we've done a number of projects in years past around looking at uh, uh, facilities and addressing multiple business workflows. This particular example was done for uh, Portsmouth Na Naval Shipyard a few years ago. And, and uh, it's a way of looking at uh, facilities and bringing together a variety of information, business information to drive different workflows. For example, you could combine tabular data such as finance or other, other data, CAD drawings on a per building basis and photographs all coming from different business systems and uh, provide access to all of that information directly from the map centric application. This particular application for the Naval Shipyard dealt with trouble calls and work requests on a building by building basis. So the business value around uh, facility management on the Google Maps platform is to drive decision making by getting uh, understanding all of the business operations across facilities or properties. It's very important to get the complete picture from multiple business systems. Uh, quite often, uh, a lot of that business information is locked in other databases, other departments, other file structures, and you can't see it all in one place without a lot of extensive searching and that will limit your ability to make uh, decisions from all different perspectives. So getting the complete picture to ensure sound decisions and effective communications are very important. Of course, you can stay ahead of problems by quickly identifying location-based patterns around maintenance issues, uh, building usage, such as, such as uh, energy usage, and, uh, and planning perspectives. And if you uh, need the ability to uh, have real-time data coming into a uh, a command and control uh, perspective. The Google Maps platform provides an excellent environment for bringing in real-time data. It could be security cameras, it could be door sensors, air quality sensors, any type of, uh, of uh, real-time sensor data, bring it together into a map-centric view and then use that with alerts and notifications to improve responses to, uh, to emergency situations. And then finally, these type of applications are very good, just like you, you saw in uh, Aaron's demo on the Rutgers application of providing a, an, uh, an application for navigation for getting around a large facility, multiple buildings, uh, which is obviously very important for visitors, maintenance crews, contractors, and emergency responders. Another application is in the locating of facilities and properties, very important for um, uh, retail of locating new uh, new uh, businesses or any type of organization that is interested in extending their services into new uh, geographic areas. This is a project we did uh, recently for the city of Pawtucket in Rhode Island it's using the Google Maps platform, primarily the, uh, the JavaScript Maps API, for helping to find uh, uh, appropriate uh, locations for new services in this case, that were within proximity of a train station. You can see the symbol in the middle for the train station and then the, the, uh, the colored zones of, of distance away from that in terms of travel time. And so this is a quick way to, to look at uh, available properties and, uh, and consider multiple factors around, uh, such as proximity zones, valuation, travel times, demographics, any information that you have available to you either on your own or through the Places API from provided by Google to help drive uh, decisions about where to locate new services or new buildings. Next slide, please. Google Maps is a great platform for working with risk assessment from uh, natural disaster uh, scenarios such as flooding. 
This is a project we did for the city of Gloucester in uh, Massachusetts, looking at hurricane inundation models and mapping those against the uh, properties along the shorelines for a uh, uh, facility or property risk assessment. So basically in this, this particular project, it was looking at two uh, flooding scenarios, flood levels, if you will, but it could, you could easily deal with multiple uh, flooding scenarios and uh, quickly assess if the, if the flooding reaches a certain height or if the storm surge from the sea is a particular height, here's what's going to be affected and that can be used to drive protection and resiliency actions. This project was uh, powered by the, uh, the JavaScript Maps API. Next slide, please. The final il uh, illustration of going deeper is all about scalability. This is a project we did a few years ago for the uh, Texas uh, Department of Transportation to build a, an emergency management public communications uh, website application. This is a public app, it's public facing, it's called Drive Texas, and you're welcome to, uh, if you Google that, you can get the link and go visit your, yourself. It is a live view of all of the road conditions and weather conditions in across the state of Texas uh, at uh, any given moment. And as a storm approaches, then this thing becomes very popular because it's showing the traffic, the weather, so that people can make uh, uh, good decisions about uh, staying safe or uh, evacuating if necessary. And in fact, on a lot of cases, you may not be aware of this, but in the coastal states, the DOTs, uh, when a hurricane is approaching, for example, they will often uh, reverse the flow of the interstates called contraflow and uh, have all, all the lanes in both, in both directions all going in one direction to make it easier for people to evacuate away from the coast. And in fact, this application includes a contraflow view that uh, will show you live data, show you the uh, interstates and the roads where the flow has been reversed, how to get onto those and help with the evacuation. This, is, uh, this application is driven by the maps, a combination of the maps API directions and places API. Now in terms of scalability, go to the next slide, please. This, uh, on average, this website, this application, was getting about a thousand users a day. And we had this in place uh, prior to August of 2017 when Hurricane Harvey came ashore uh, just below the Houston area. You may remember this, there was extensive flooding across uh, the Houston area for quite a while. The storm went on for five days. And during those five days, here is a chart showing the usage of this uh, Drive Texas application. The application was showing information on over 500 road closures. Uh, we had at times uh, upwards of 30,000 concurrent users. And during those five days, we had over 500,000 sessions per day. And no time during that uh, time period were there any crashes of the application or performance degradation. This is an excellent example of how Google Maps running on the Google Cloud can easily scale up to handle very, very large volumes of users as well as data and, uh, and, and not slow down and not crash. So it's an excellent platform for those purposes. Next slide, please. So you've seen a little bit about uh, some common business use cases and then some a little bit more complex uh, use cases that uh, we've built for our clients. Let me uh, finish up the webinar by talking a little bit about how we can help you in uh, meeting, in building out and uh, supporting you with your Google Map platform efforts and, and even potentially assisting you in building out applications. So I have three topics here, a little bit about us as a Google Premier partner, a, little, a quick overview of our professional services, and then I'd like to introduce to you a brand new branded managed services program that we call Spatial IQ. Next slide, please. So we're quite committed to Google. We've been a, a premier service partner since 2014, so now six years. We are one of only eight premier service partners for Google Maps in North America, so we're in good company. We are certified as a location-based services specialist company, and we have 26 certifications across our, our team uh, at Applied Geographics. Uh, including 12 MAPS Technical Fundamentals, 5 MAPS Sales Fundamentals, 
six Google Cloud sales fundamentals, and we have three certified Google Cloud architects. So we are very well equipped with some strong skill sets in uh, both the Google Maps platform as well as the Google Cloud platform. And as such, we are uh, available and ready to assist all of our clients. Next slide, please. A little bit about our professional services. We offer a wide range of services, starting with uh, strategic planning. We can easily sit down with you and discuss your goals and your visions around using location data for your business uh, operations or to improve your current business workflows. Uh, we have uh, a, a great consulting staff that understands uh, the use of location data and understands the platform and can work with you on helping you plan out some strategies. We have done many, many projects working with all types of data, uh, ranging from business data, tabular data, to all of the geospatial data formats, vector formats, imagery formats. We know how to transform the data. We know how to uh, bring it onto a map. We know how to bring it in using web services. We know how to connect business data with your geospatial application. So lots of experience in that area. We have done extensive projects in combining uh, other systems with your geospatial application, with your Google Maps platform application. So for example, the, the uh, applications I was showing earlier around facility management, for, for example, bringing in financial data that is related to properties or to facilities or bringing in asset management data that's coming out of an asset management system tied to buildings, or bringing in uh, energy use data coming from uh, for buildings, and bringing all that uh, data together from other systems into one map-centric application. We have extensive experience in doing that. We've been in the business for 29 years of uh, developing applications, not only on Google Maps, but on other platforms. And the last six years, we've had uh, experience in developing on the Google Maps platform. So we're in very good position to help you there. And we have extensive support services, everything from help desk to uh, deep technical training, to sitting down with you and uh, consulting, providing consulting on how to optimize your APIs. So basically our team can help your team be open, agile, responsive, and most importantly, help you be transformative in improving your business workflows using the Google Maps platform. Uh, let's see, next slide, please. So on the topic of support services, we have just recently introduced this uh, new program that we call Spatial IQ. This is a managed services program that is purchased on an annual subscription basis that basically has four components a discovery meeting where we sit down with you, we understand your goals around the use of location data, and we review the Google Maps platform with you and help you strategize on what you want to accomplish. We have a, 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 a support component to this program, dedicated help desk hours and training resources. And then we have a considerable amount of consulting. This is measured in terms of hours of consulting on best practices around usage, performance monitoring. This is where we can talk to you about how to optimize the use of the APIs. Uh, we've seen some cases with clients where they're using the APIs on their own, but it's not quite optimal. And we've got a lot of experience in this, especially with our, uh, our certified uh, uh, people around the platform, and we can uh, provide consulting on that. And this is not a one and done uh, exercise under this managed services. We will meet with you quarterly, We'll take a look at the projects that you're taking on. We'll review your goals and your visions and see what's working, answer questions and discovering, helping you discover next steps. So this is our spatial IQ program. It's an excellent way to get started. If you're already working with the platform, it's a way to get smarter at it and extend the use of the platform. Or if you're brand new to the platform, this is an excellent starting point. So with that, I'd like to uh, go ahead to the next slide, please. Uh, Aaron is gonna talk for a moment about a new Google Maps landing page that we encourage you to, uh, to, to take a look at. Aaron? Thanks, Dave. Um, so for all of you listening on the line, we just launched a new landing page on the AppGeo website, specifically with our business and corporate customers in mind. And this was launched just today in conjunction with 
our webinar here. And we also have a download for you all that you can take away um, going into a little more detail on some of the APIs that we looked at in this webinar, as well as some of the common business workflows, which they can be used in conjunction with. Um, we encourage you to check this out and we'll be happy to circulate a link at the conclusion of this webinar. Additionally, we will be continuing to add content to this page and live demos um, to give you all quite a bit more insight into what can be done on the platform. Okay, next slide, please. So we'd like to thank you again for attending our webinar. We, uh, we hope this has been informative in uh, showing you what is possible with the Google Maps platform, a little bit about the APIs, and then give you some ideas about um, what types of applications can be done. And uh, hopefully uh, communicate what our, our services are available to you for helping you uh, get the most business value out of uh, your Google Maps platform. I'd like to turn it back over to Jordan and uh, he's got some, uh, as questions have come in, we can take a, the last few minutes and answer a few of those. Jordan? Yeah, thank you, Dave, and, and thank you, Aaron, both of you. That was that was fantastic. I really appreciate that. And we did, during the course of that time, get some great questions as well. Um, before I jump into these questions, I just want to mention that, uh, I want to reiterate, I should say, that as, as Aaron mentioned, we will send out the recording. Uh, we did get a couple of those questions, so yes, you will get a recording of this, especially if you did join late. Uh, I did notice that a couple of those questions came from those folks, so we'll make sure to get the recording out to you. Uh, jumping into the Q&A now, this isn't the end of like uh, the opportunity to ask any more questions, so if you do have any, uh, keep them coming, but we'll jump right into them right now. So the first question is, uh, which API is more user-friendly and open source? ArcGIS versus Google Maps platform. And who would like to take that one on, Dave or Aaron? Aaron, probably? Sure, Jordan. Sure, Jordan. I can um, go ahead and take a swing at that. Um, so I've worked extensively with um, both the Esri ArcGIS stack as well as now the Google Maps platform. And um, Esri is coming out with quite a few API um, windows into some of their services that they provide that um, may offer similar functionality to what Google does. Geocoding functionality, for example, um, with Esri, that's relying on the world geocoding service. With Google, that's tapping into their own proprietary database of places. And that may sound non-consequential, but the um, actually in use, the real benefit to Google's geocoding, and I've tried this a number of times, is you can have um, incomplete addresses, you can have even small typos, um, different formatted data, or potentially just a place name like the old North Church in Boston um, without any street or zip code attached. And because Google has so many places in their database, and location information for all of them, I've seen very accurate geocoding results um, through their API. To the question about the open source nature, um, both of them are commercial products and um, you know they occur billing in different ways. But I can tell you that in terms of getting started with the project, um, Google makes all of their documentation very accessible very easy to get started and um, get working with these. It doesn't require necessarily creating um, a full enterprise setup to get going. So that's one benefit is that you can get going really fast when it comes to Google. And we'd be happy to take a further conversation for any of these questions offline if you want to get in touch and we can do a one-on-one -on -one consultation to get more depth. Awesome, thank you, Aaron. Um, so we do have another question and we have a couple more as well. Uh, we, is the NYC Core Data app using Maps JavaScript API? Good question. Aaron, you wanna take that? I believe the answer is yes, but you wanna to talk to that? Yep, um, so that was an example of the JavaScript API. And one thing that I, should have mentioned during the demo 
it's also an example of how you can use the JavaScript API for custom map styling to get that gray background versus the standard uh, multicolor Google Streets. So all of that map styling takes place within the JavaScript API code base. And that's another area that we can help you with. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. And um, as well, there's one here, one who, so if you have experience with Esri JavaScript API, how hard will it be to learn Google Maps JavaScript API? Sure. Um, so the core APIs themselves are very simple from a code perspective. The real learning curve is really around JavaScript and HTML itself in terms of implementing them into your site. These APIs were designed with web developers in mind um, in terms of integrating them into either existing applications or existing websites. So if you have a base functionality and familiarity with um, any other kind of API type of embedded code, I would theorize that it would be very easy for you to get up and running um, with Google. They provide great documentation on their site for developers. And for those of you who might not be developers yourself, that's where um, a partner can really add a lot of value is we have our own developers on staff that are super familiar with these and um, can get you up and running without necessarily having that coding experience yourself. And that was another great question. Um, we do have some more, um, so just bear with me for one second. The, again, the questions box is small even for me. Um, how would I integrate business information with a Google Maps application? And Dave, would you like to take that one on? Uh, sure, thank you, Jordan. Um, so that's a good question, and it's a pretty common one. There's a lot of people have um, internal business information, they'd like to add it into their Google Maps, and they, they may, you may not have ever thought about uh, seeing that information located on a map. Typically, the easiest way to do that is to use a common ID between a business record, maybe it's describing an asset or a property, or a facility, whatever that record uh, granularity is. Uh, a common ID, you, you're gonna need a common ID with a record that is representing the place location on your map. And then, uh, and then it's very easy to do a join of, the, uh, of those two sets of data and then show that information on the map. And once you have that information available associated with the locations on the map, then you can do lots of interesting things. You can start uh, creating dashboards to measure, for example, energy usage per building and show those show a, a color-coded thematic on the map based on energy levels. So lots of interesting scenarios there when you bring in business information. Excellent, Dave. And I hope that answers the question as well. And we do have another question that come that came in um, about HTML and CSS and how that relates to uh, versus JavaScript. So we're going to take that offline. I do see your question, but just rest assured that we will reach out to you after this webinar. Uh, you know who you are. And just real quick, there is two more questions here. Um, how can I add my company brand identity to Google Maps app? That's a great question, and it's also very important for a number of Maps users, especially in uh, the retail space and um, travel. Anyone who they want to take advantage of these, you know, great map data, but they might want to present something to their audience that looks a little different than the consumer grade map that everyone's very familiar with. Um, as I mentioned a little earlier, Google allows styling of the map through the JavaScript API. They have some sites set up to help make this easier, and it's also an area where AppGeo can help you. This gives you control over features such as um, the density of labels and what type of point of interests are coming up. This is um, very applicable when you're a business yourself and you might, for example, not want all your competitors to also show up on the map around you as they would by default. Um, 
other things that you can do include, um, you know, styling of the page the map is on. Um, that's more in the HTML realm, adding um, custom map markers, which could be um, a version of your logo to represent where one of your locations are. And um, I will say that this is an area that Google is actively um, working on some new features around when it comes to styling. And we expect um, sometime this year there to be some exciting announcements about um, new features. So we're very excited about that and we'll be um, hopefully putting together another presentation on those as soon as we have more information. Excellent. Thank you for that deep, um, comprehensive response, Aaron. And I do have one more question. Um, this is either for Dave or Aaron. Um, how can flood modeling be used to assess facility risk management? Aaron, go ahead. Sure thing, Dave. Sure thing, Dave. Um, so flood modeling is an area that AppGeo actually has extensive background in um, as we work with a lot of cities and towns which are at risk for this type of thing and have done several assessments across um, different parts of the United States, including uh, the Northeast and Texas around these sorts of applications. Um, one way that this can be accomplished and that we've had success with is hosting flood depth information that can be obtained either through, um, say, a FEMA model or a more comprehensive um, inundation model, as they're known. Um, these can be hosted as a raster data set that can be tiled and overlaid on top of Google Maps, um, bringing in features like building footprints and property boundaries allows you to use um, spatial queries and all sorts of other um, geospatial functions to quickly summarize, for example, the total number of parcels that are at risk from a given storm. And through the use of layers, you can create an interface very quickly where users would have the ability to, say, toggle between a 10-year and a 100-year uh, storm. Those are different levels of intensity. And understand how the risk might change going between these different events. It's often um, not quite as simplistic as you think when you take into consideration the uh, topography of the land and the capacity of various rivers. Um, the example you saw early in this presentation was from Gloucester, Massachusetts, and that is an example of where we've used our own tool, MapGeo, to provide flooding overlays we recently did a presentation on this exact topic um, with flooding and resiliency. And if this is an area that you're interested in, I would more than encourage you to um, check out the recording that we have available of that presentation. I'm sure we'll do it again um, in the near future because we got a great response. And also check out our website where we have a bit more information on those areas. And I will say that this type of flooding data has quite a lot more applicability outside of the public sector when we're looking at um, insurance and asset management, um, finance. There's quite a number of use cases where um, the private sector is increasingly looking to tap into this type of data to evaluate risk and um, get ahead of these type of events. Thank you, Aaron, and I, I love how you kept that on the um, the private industry side. That's definitely who we're speaking to right now. We want to let you know uh, that we very much appreciate everybody for joining us today for this webinar, and we will be sending everybody an email uh, that has registered or attended. Uh, keep in mind there are some great links in that email, more than just the recording, and we re encourage you to check that out as well. And uh, have a great afternoon, everybody. Once again, thank you so much from Applied Geographics.